In the last episode on this PC200 service, we drained the swing gearbox and engine oil plugs, replaced the engine oil filter, as well as the fuel filter. In this episode, we'll continue off by heading up to change the secondary fuel filter. Brandon with his hulking muscles must have over tightened this. What a dick. Refill the engine oil and do some other quick fluid checks. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanics guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. In the next couple episodes, we are going to follow Sean as he performs a thousand hour service on this PC200 LC-8. If you're only interested in specific maintenance items, we've created a shorter and more to the point versions of each task, which we'll link in the description. Now let's check the swing gearbox and engine oil drain plugs from earlier. So now that we've drained this and we've changed the fuel or the, the engine oil filter, we'll close the drain. Pull the tube off and I'm going to wait until after we've filled the engine oil back up and run the machine a little bit before we uh, go ahead and put all the panels and stuff back on because I want to run it and check it for leaks. All right. There we is. So now we're going to put the plug back in for the swing uh, gearbox case. Let's get that up the finger tight. And then finish it off with this. This good and snug is all we need. And then we'll go up top and we'll start refilling some fluids. So here on top of the machine, we can access the secondary fuel filter, we can access the hydraulic filters, and we can also fill the engine oil. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the secondary fuel filter. This right here, well this is a bracket, and this bracket holds a filter head, and that filter head has a filter on it. And this is the fuel, the fuel filter, the secondary fuel filter. Brandon with his hulking muscles must have over tightened this. What a dick. <laughs> dick move, man. Dick move. Let's put a rig there to catch any of the dribblings. Go. Okay, so here we have our new fuel filter. Uh, I've lubricated the O-ring with some fuel. It's been primed the proper way. Here we go. We just need to make sure that the seal is in place, and it is. So there's a, an O-ring here. So this comes with the fuel filter. So there is not really an o-ring kind of like a like a square ring Let's see if i can get it off here all right so this is the the new ring we're going to change this every time we do the filter there's no point in leaving it on there and forgetting about it don't be lazy and change it just change it because it is a wonderful sunny day I'm hanging out here with my two best buds. I prefer to use PR88 on my hands as opposed to gloves, just for a little bit of dexterity. Uh, PR88 protects from the potential hazards of, you know, putting your hands in fuel and oil and other, other uh, petroleum-based products. There we go. Nice and snug. Wipe my hands down a little bit and I'll try and snug it just a touch more. Nope, not moving. That's it. All right. Next, we'll move on to filling the engine with oil. Here we are. We're going to fill up the engine oil. Need something to break the vent. 
Let's see what I got here. The O-ring pick. Well, the vent is to allow air to go into the bucket so you don't get that glugging effect. So as you're pouring, it doesn't go glug, glug, glug. You got a nice steady stream. So we need 23 liters. Reference the machine's manual to know how much oil you will need to be putting in. Is that your fancy funnel with the filter? This is my fancy funnel with the screen. The screen is going to pick out any of the little bits that might possibly fall in there. Side effects. So using Tecmo brand engine oil may lead to increased blood flow to your poop. This may also result in increased female arousal. Or not, I'm not sure. Really no science to prove any of this. Just have to take my word for it. Okay, so we just put in 20 liters and it calls for 23.1. So I have my measuring jug here. So I'm just gonna top it up to just a pinch over three liters. That's the glugging effect from not opening the vent. No more glug. Oop, that's a little much. You know, I overfilled that just a smidge, so I won't pour it all in. It's a good idea to periodically check to avoid overfilling. So we're just gonna give it a moment to drain all the way down. So I'll wipe and clean the dipstick here. Give it a moment. So typically what I do is because when I pour all this engine oil in, it doesn't all drain to the bottom instantly. A bunch of it stays in the top of the cylinder head underneath the valve cover and it takes a little while for it to all drain down. You need to give it a moment for it to drain. Some engines drain a lot slower than others. Um, on a warm day like this, where the oil flows quite readily, it's not such a big deal. We don't need to wait so long. But um, yeah, just give it a moment. You may need to take a couple measurements just to be sure. So right there, we are just, just above the top line just above I don't think that's so much that it's gonna mess anything up we should be fine there so I'll wipe that double check you can run the machine and check it again that's actually a good good plan um, but being that we primed the oil filter we really shouldn't lose much yeah you can see it's right right here right above the right above the top of the H. So we will run the machine after and uh, check it again. But for now, we know we can run it. Okay, so while we're up here, I'm just gonna check the coolant level. There's other things that should be checked when you're doing the coolant as well. So the level is good, it's right there. So when we're checking this, Right now, we're just gonna check the level, um, but you can also check to see what its freeze point is and what its uh, protection level is. So a lot of these machines will have a coolant filter that has a desiccant inside of it, and that helps to protect the machine from electrolysis that happens inside the engine block. Um, this machine in particular does not have that filter. But there are additives and there are special coolants that you can use for diesel engines that have that stuff in it, very specifically for diesels. Um, and there's also these pH test strips that you can check your coolant. It'll do, it'll tell you what the coolant uh, protection level is and what the DCA charges. That's it for this episode. 
In the next one, you'll see Sean change the hydraulic filters. Holy cow. Josh did this one. Teamed up with Andre the Giant. The foam breather filter, as well as refill the swing gearbox oil. It looks like we're on the mark. Wow. I'm Sean, and I fix And if you want to learn how to fix too, like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like any information in regards to filters that we've used in our videos or lubricants, visit FortisHD.com.